Welcome to the Old Time Radio Superman Show from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. Got a comment? Email me, adam at adamsweb.us. Um, please remember to check out Laser and Sword magazine, laserandsword.com, for the latest in uh, new serial fiction. Um, we po- have uh, new episodes uh, posted every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Uh, well, last time... Uh, uh, Clark Kent had just set himself up to get cheated by his guide with an overly generous offer. Um, So let's go ahead and we're going to get into uh, today's episode, The Metropolis Football Team Poison, Part 12. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Look, up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can leap tall buildings at a single bound, race a speeding bullet to its target, bend steel in his bare hands, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. And now to our story. Seeking an antidote for the stupefying potion given the members of the Metropolis football team, Clark Kent has come to the plantation settlement of Pernambuco, deep in the Central American jungles. The antidote, a brown crystalline substance, is in the possession of the chief of a tribe of savage headhunting Narwhan Indians. Kent, after talking with John Carter, manager of the plantation, made arrangements for a local white derelict known as Pango Pete to lead him to the Narwhan tribe. But Pete, Willing to turn a dishonest deal, has learned that the brown crystals are worth millions of dollars to Kent and plans not to let him gain possession of them without exacting heavy tribute. Carter and Kent have just left Pango Peak Shack and are seated on the screen porch of the manager's bungalow. The orange glow of Carter's cigarettes, the only break in the impenetrable darkness. From off in the distance can be heard the rhythmic beat of Tom Tom. Listen. those tom-toms continue all through the night, Mr. Carter? Yes. Night and day. That's been going on for almost a week. Tango Pete said they were Narwhan drums. Some sort of ceremony. Oh, he's probably lying. He told us this afternoon that the Narwhan tribe had moved on. Those drums aren't more than ten miles away. You know, Kent, I can't get over your offering to pay him $500 to take you to the tribe. Well, it really isn't important. Well, that's where we disagree. There's something you don't quite understand, Kent. Something that goes beyond money. What do you mean? Simply this. Pango Pete is a human derelict. One of those men who's committed a crime against society. No longer has a place among civilized people. That's why he's down here in Pernambuco, because in these jungles, even the lowest of white men has standing. Aren't you being a little unfair? Seems quite harmless. He is to everyone but himself. His petty thieveries are unimportant. His willingness to permit himself to sink lower and lower is certainly none of our business. Yet in the short year that I've known him, I've somehow felt that there was good in the man if if someone could only bring it out. Yet you blame me for trying to help him by giving him some money. Well, you haven't helped him. I may be wrong, but I'd be willing to wager that one dollar would buy Pango Pete's honest assistance sooner than five hundred. You offered him a large sum of money for a job he knows isn't worth anywhere near that amount. The result, he's suspicious. You so willingly pay five hundred, he reasons he should get a thousand or more. Yes, I see your point, but my greatest interest is getting my hands on that antidote at any cost. As I said once before, if five hundred dollars will safeguard three million, I'm all for spending it. All I can say is I hope you haven't made a mistake. I hope he isn't misleading you. I'm quite certain those drums we've been hearing are not now on drums. They're too close. Those headhunters rarely come within twenty miles of a settlement. They know the government has set a price on them. I think Pango Pete's lying. Well, he better not be. I haven't much time, as you know. That antidote must be back in Metropolis before Saturday. What's that? Oh, sounds like a cheetah. The jungle is full of them. They're vicious little beasts. Are they dangerous? No, not man killers, if that's what you mean. Oh, I suppose they'd claw a man if one of them was cornered, but I've never heard of a cheetah attacking. I can't say... Ah. That didn't sound like an animal. It isn't. It's one of my native boys. Come on, let's see what's happening. Here, I'll open the screen door. It came from over there at the edge of the jungle. Wait. A 
I don't hear anything now, except the drums. Where are you going, Kent? Just to look around in the brush. Kent, come back. Don't be a fool. It's alive with tape. Don't worry. Whoever was screaming was in serious trouble. Good thing it's pitch dark in case I have to handle whatever this is. A Superman. Yeah, I can't see a thing yet. Wait. Something's moving up ahead of me. Sounds like it might be... What was that? Something struck me and dropped to the ground. Great Scott, it's a stone-tipped dart. Oh, there's another. Looks serious. I'd better get back and warn Carter. Ken, is that you? Yes, I'm all right. Ken, you never should have gone in there. That's one of the primary rules in the traffic. Stay out of the jungle at night. I don't suppose you found anything. Yes, I did. These. Poison darts. Where did you get them? They were shot at me, but they missed. Kent, that means only one thing. There are headhunters in that patch of jungle. We're in trouble. No wonder those drums were so close. Come on, I've got to round up the men. You'd better go down to Pango Pete's shack and get him up. We may need him. Meet me at my cottage, but hurry. Okay. Uh, running into headhunters is something I hadn't expected. I hope this doesn't kill my chances of getting that antidote. Now, oh, this is Pete's shack, I think. Yeah. Pete! Ooh. Mr. Kent, open up. It ain't door yet. No, but open the door. There's trouble. Hold on. Now, what's all the excitement? Now, Mr. Carter says there are headhunters in the jungle near the plantation. How would he know? Someone shot these at me. Look. Blimey. Poison stick. Don't point them at me. One scratch with them and you're a goner for sure. Dig them into the ground. That'll kill the poison. All right, I will. Mr. Carter's rounding up the men. He wants us to meet him at his cottage. Right. Wait till I get into some clothes. Okay. How'd you know them fighters was in the jungle? Well, we heard a man screaming, and when we got to the edge of the brush, these darts came winging out. Who was it screaming? We don't know. Mr. Carter thinks it was one of his native boys. You know what that means, don't you? They got the poor blighter them even did. Well, I'm ready. All right, let's go. Them Tom Tom sound like they moved up close. Yes, they have. You sure they're Nawan drums? Couldn't be nothing else. Tell by the ring of them. Well, that means Nawan shot the dart. Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, Mr. Carter certainly rounded the men up fast. They're all behind his cottage. Oh, there he is on the porch. Ken, come inside quickly. Pete with you? Yes, he is. Where is he? Right here, Mr. Carter. How can we stop this, Pete? Kent told you what happened. Yep. Yeah. They got one boy, Tonio. I suppose we can get him up for loss. Yeah, looks like it. Those tom-toms are awfully close now. That's not all. Listen. Yeah, war chance, that is. It means business and black devils. We've got to stop them. Can you handle a rifle, Kent? Yes, but I... Here, take this one and shoot to kill. There's no telling how many of them are hidden in that jungle. What do you say, Pete? Well, I don't know rightly. Them now wants a big tribe. Mighty big. Probably a hundred of them, all with blowguns and poison darts. Listen to them chant. Blood curdling. If I could get to old Chief Songer, I might get him to call them off for a handful of trinkets. Oh, that's impossible now. It's certain death to anyone who goes near that jungle. There's one of them. See the heathen sneaking along the edge? Yes, I see him. Almost like a black pygmy. Yeah, they're little fellows, but mean. Keep an eye on him. Watch what he does. I'm going to keep more than an eye on him. Hold that screen door open, Ken. Okay. You got the black devil. Oh, listen to them now. They're going crazy. Yeah, that shot did it. Afraid my native boys are going to get panicky. They're all hurt in the back, right to death. Take a look at them, Pete. Calm them down. Yeah, I'll do what I can. You see anything, Ken? No, not a thing. They must be close. That chanting and the, the drums. Entirely too close for comfort, Ken. You realize what can happen? These savage tribes have wiped out entire settlements. They're amazing marksmen with their deadly little blowguns and poison darts. Look! Something's moving at the edge of the clearing. Over to the left. Yes, I see. Open the screen door. Okay. Look out! Oh. Saved my life that time, Kent. That dart would have struck me in the shoulder if you hadn't pushed me. How in heaven's name did you ever see it coming? I don't know. Maybe we'd better not open that door again. Probably not. What's happened to Pango Pete? He shouldn't be taking this long. Here I am, Mr. Corbett. You said to calm the men down, didn't you? How are they? 
herded together like a bunch of sheep, that's how. If them now ones get close enough to spot them, they'll be slaughter, and you can lie to that. We can't let them get close enough. Uh, sooner said than done. Like's not the clearing to lie with them, only we can't see them. Like's not they're crawling up on their bellies, fixing to rush us. If only they'd stop that infernal drumming and that chant. It's driving me mad. Let me see whether I can make power with them. You mean go out there? Blimey, no, I ain't that crazy. Step aside from the door. We'll give it a try. Now keep a sharp watch. We will. Well, here goes. I o fire! I o fire! Jenny, stop. Call the drum. I o fire! I o fire! What did he say? I asked him who they was, and he says the now on the stick. Find out what they want. Now on! Salopa! My God, Ali! Yes? You ain't gonna like this, Mr. Carter. None at all. What is it? What do they want? He said, Kayabana. That means five heads. Five heads? That's it. If you asked me, I'd say we were getting off mighty cheap. Nobody's asking you. This isn't the Middle Ages. I wouldn't make a human sacrifice if my life depended on it. Tell the bloodthirsty beggars no. As you wish. Naga! Naga! What does that mean? It means we'd all better start saying our prayers now. Because here they come, and there ain't nothing going to stop them. As the weird tom-toms beat with new frenzy, and as the savage voices of the Narwhan headhunters rise in the night, Clark Kent, as Superman, prepares to do battle with the strangest enemy he has yet faced. How will he fare against a hundred black pygmies who are shadows in the darkness? Can he keep them off and at the same time get possession of the precious antidote? Listen in to the next episode for a smashing climax to this jungle drama. Follow the thrilling story with Superman. Don't forget, tune in again for the next thrilling episode with Superman. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Welcome back. Uh, yeah, the exciting jungle drama, the Metropolis football team poison. I, I just still can't get over that and how much the plot line has uh, changed. I thought the conversation about uh, the offer of money not being the best help um, for uh, Pete, I, I thought that was actually kind of interesting. Uh, the entire plot line... Um, I, I think this is uh, this is setting up a fascinating showdown. I don't think it's going to be much of a contest. It never is when Superman actually gets into the fighting because we haven't introduced Kryptonite yet uh, in the storyline. So, all right. Well, we'll find out what will happen uh, uh, in part thirteen uh, next week. Uh, but uh, for now, any comments, email me Adam at adamsweb.us. Cast your vote for the show on Podcast Alley. Uh, Back from Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.